Hello everybody, this is Dream Gamer back for another tournament video for Dinosaur King. And yes, we are kicking off Group G. Yes, we're finally giving these guys the time to shine. And our matches will be Engineer Gaming going up against Anton Gushan, Cryo Nova against MEJP10, and Team Asia against Ultimate Dino Queen. Right, without further ado, let's go on with the first match. Alrighty then, and up first for Engineer Gaming, we have an Acrocanthosaurus. And yes, not an Alpha Acrocanthosaurus, a generic vanilla, plain old Acrocanthosaurus. Um, yeah, that Burning Dash could do a lot of damage, Flare Sword, and, well, Tag Team might be a Joker move, but it could work. But it's going to be tough, because in the blue corner for Anton Gusha, I'm just going to say Anton, we have a Shunosaurus. Um, the only Shunosaurus in this tournament, yeah. Definitely does more crit damage than Baryonyx, but his other two moves are weaker. But that Hydro Cutter could do a lot of damage to Acro. Oh my god, like Shuna looks tiny compared to Acro. Like, you think this Acro would just go up to it and just pull its head off. Not in Dinosaur King. In Dinosaur King, the Shunasaurus will have the upper hand in this match. But can it make good on it? Burning Dash has been triggered, but the Shunasaurus does get off the first hit, dealing a respectable amount of damage. Ooh, but the Acro is going to get off a Burning Dash. Even with the tight disadvantage, this should do a decent amount of damage. Yeah, look at that. Really good damage. But Aqua Vortex does get triggered, and as does the Hydro Cut. Ooh, we're gonna see an Aqua Vortex from the Shunosaurus. Oh yeah, I didn't go through Shunosaurus's moves. Yet. Well, it doesn't matter because one, I post the moves up in English, and two, not really much to say about Shuno. And just like that, all of Acrocanthosaurus's moves have gone bye-bye. Okay, I'll end this quick so you don't have to listen to the annoying sound. And just like that, the Acrocanthosaurus is not going down. Wow, the Acrocanthosaurus hanging on by a thread. And that thread has just been severed as the Acrocanthosaurus goes down. Oh, hang on, I just remembered I need to get my notepad out. Because this is Super Talaros. Okay, what is your name, pal? Engineer Gaming? Okay, Awaken Mode on 2. Um, yeah, unlike Ultimate Dino King's Super Talaros, this one is pretty much attack-minded. But, Engineer Gaming is going to have a little bit of work to do here if he wants to pull this back. Ooh. Wait, what? Wait, what? Okay, it was a tie anyway, but Ocean Panic is activating from the Shunosaurus. Yeah, I messed up there. I was supposed to click Scissors, but again, it's a tie, so it didn't matter. And Ocean Panic would have activated anyway. Not good for the Talaroras. And that is definitely not good. Okay, that's once. Um, yeah, I got thrown off by... Yeah, I think this guy's Blunder type. That's why the Talaroras' Scissors was nullified. Oh, hang on. I forget my own rules. Hang on, I'm gonna pause that just in case I mess up. Okay, so it's paper, plain, scissors, so Shunosaurus will indeed get yet another hit. And it's awakening time for Talarurus. Now the best result here would actually be a tie, because then the awaken mode would carry over onto the next dinosaur. A tie is not what Blood Engineer Game is gonna get. Instead, a Hydro Cutter is going to be activated from the Shunosaurus. Which indeed takes out the Talaros. And all of a sudden, Engineer Gaiman is down to his last dinosaur, the Parasaurolophus, with armor. Yes, this is probably the MVP of the team here. Uh, not much power gained there because moves like Dino Force, Emerald Garden 
don't give you any extra strength or technique. But it's going to be a long way back now for, for Engineer Gaiman. Although the saving grace is that the Shunosaurus's HP is, well, a tie will kill it. And a tie will indeed kill it. Uh, will that blunder effect carry over? Not sure. Anyway, up next for Anton Gushan, we have a Lanzasaurus. Um, not much to say with this moveset. That um, super impact could be deadly. And well, Fawn Whip is Fawn Whip and Tail Smash is not really special. <sighs> yeah, the Blunder type doesn't carry over. I thought, I didn't think it would. Anyway, Anton Gushan finally takes down the Shunosaurus. But he's still got a long way to go yet. Ooh, and that's not good. A tail smash from the Lanzusaurus. <laughs> okay, I can get rid of my book now since all the super dinosaurs have been used. But an Emerald Garden is triggered by pa Parasaurolophus, so it, that could be a saving grace for Engineer Gaming. Okay, I'm just going to say Engineer. Ooh, especially now, as it will steal Lanzusaurus' health. And it will also give Parasaurolophus some HP back, which could be crucial, because as I said, Engineer Gaming has some catching up to do. Oh, that was terrible! That was garbage! Ooh, the super impact has been triggered there. Okay, that's a type. And that bar's gonna fill I think we're gonna see Dino Tech. Indeed we are! I see. Parasaurolophus gets off another head on the Lanzusaurus. And it's Dino Tector time, so give me a sec while I enter the code. Ooh, could this be what Engineer Gaming needed? Okay, scissors. Ooh, it's gonna be an ultimate leaf from the Parasaurolophus. And Lanzusaurus is going down. And as for Anton Gushan's third dinosaur, we have Gigas. Yes, it's going to be tough for Engineer Game here because this guy gets his. Well, it has Goma's moveset of Heat Eruption, Burning Dash, and Flare Sword. But it'll probably be just as useful on Gigas as it is on Eocarcaria. So, right, Engineer Gaming is not out of the woods yet. And he has to refill his bar up again if he wants to get off another Ultimate Leaf. Wait, hang on, hang on, stop. Okay, okay. This round will be a tie. Because Parasaurolophus got off his ultimate move. And Anton Gushan is down to his last dinosaur. Although, I think it is going to be curtains for Engineer Game. Burning Dash coming in from Gigas. Yep, yeah, that's game over for Engineer Game. And Anton Gushan takes a well deserved victory. Uh, not much to say there, just a generic match. Got to see Ultimate Leaf, but. Just a bit too short there from Engineer Gaming. Right, I'll update this table and we'll move on to our next match. Alrighty then. And at first, in the red corner for Crown Nova, we have a Lambiosaurus. Lambiosaurus down. Yes, quite a few grass dinosaurs in this group. Um, not much to say here. Although I do think the charge type aspect and the tiebreaker might synergize quite well. Anyway, in the blue corner for MEJP10, we have a pan. Sorry, almost gonna burp then. <laughs> a Panoplosaurus. Um, not again, not not too much to say. The Quake Saber could be deadly, and wow, that's a lot of power. And you're all really attack-minded, this Panoplosaurus. But it's gonna be tough because this Lambiosaurus will have the type advantage. And 
I'd probably say, looking at the three dinos each combatant has, I'd say Cryonova has a slight edge here. But, with RNG, the person who has the slight edge will probably get shredded. Ooh, that's a good start there from the Lambiosaurus. Ooh, that's a tie. Yeah, you could definitely see... Uh, no, the Lambiosaurus took a bit of damage, actually. But a Quake Saber is coming from the Panoplosaurus. Mm -hmm. Ooh, a decent amount of damage done to Lambiosaurus. Ooh, that's another tie. Yeah, I think, yeah, definitely Panoplosaurus takes more damage than Lambiosaurus. Oh, oh, what's this? Ooh, is a green impulse from the Lambiosaurus. <laughs> and they steal a like yeah, like that literally makes a difference. Like if it gave you enough health to survive a tie, then green impulse would be better, but oh well. What I will say is that the Lambiosaurus, unsurprisingly, defeats Panoplosaurus and gives Cryonova a 1-0 lead. But up next for MEJP10, we have a Joe Borrier. And um, again, gone for more all attacking moves. Could Tail Smash do some damage? Or will it come from Futaba Camp? Um, can any GP10 turn this around? Oh, oh obviously, he's playing the time, yeah, but can he pull it back? <coughs> Choke. Go out of five. Ooh, that's, a, that's a, an attack from the Joe Borrier. And I think, nope, no lethal yet for Lambiosaurus. But the Futaba Cannon does get triggered. Oh, that's a tie. And the Lambiosaurus goes down. But does take a bit of chunk, bit of health off the Jobori. Anyway, up next for Cryonova. Unsurprisingly, yet another Cryolophosaurus. But unlike the other Cryos in this tournament, instead of Frozen Glide, we have an Alpha Dice. Uh, will that help? Will it not? We'll just have to see. Because the damage from Alpha Dice is set, it's not based off your dinosaur's attack. So it could be a smart decision. Oh, that's a tie. Wow, Cryo took loads of damage. Um, I forgot what type is, um, I think it's Heroic type. Ooh, that's a lot of damage there from the Cryo. Cryo Nova in the lead in this match. Ooh, but could that change? Could it change with this Dino Swing? Ooh, the... It's got a fly. <laughs> it's like a fly in front of the screen. No crystal getting triggered, but the cryo is not going for it. Oh, there's the tie recovery effect from the crown of Asaurus. Ooh, that's another tie. The Joe Borrier hanging on here. But the crown of Asaurus is gonna gal for snow crystal. Which will mean MEJP10 is down to his last dinosaur. That dinosaur being? The Allosaurus Atrox. Lucky 7 type? Well, it needs to be Lucky 7 type because he's got pitiful type. And well, look at how much crit damage it does. I don't know if it'll be if it's maximized with Stomping Hammer though. Like, Biting wins the best move you can put on it. Like, this Allosaurus Atrox is all about the crit. So if you don't put a really strong move for your crit, then you're not really maximising Atrox's power. Ooh, another Snow Crystal from the crowd. Well, 
or Atrox's health just going below half. Oh, that's tight. Okay, Cryo and Crown over secure a bonus point win. The answer is yes. A bonus point win for Crown over to start his campaign. And a fine win and not really a surprise because I said Crown over is the favourite in this match. As for MEJP10, we just have to hope he wins the next match. Right, time to update the table and it'll be time for our third match. Alright then, and as for our final matchup in round one of Group G games, we have Team Asia going up against Ultimate Dino Queen. And up first for Team Asia, we have an Udanoceratops. Um, yeah, I tried to go for unusual dinosaurs, like ones that weren't in other people's teams. And Udanoceratops is one of them. And as for Ultimate Dino Queen in the blue corner, we have. Surprise, not surprisingly, a Uteraptor. Like, this seems to be a staple for her. And yeah, pretty much a... Yeah, almost identical moveset to what I'm using, except for instead of Cyclone, she has Tiebreaker. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I don't know who's going to win this one. Like, Team Asia was one of the bot teams that did well in my last tournament. So it could do well this time, it could be one to watch. But Ultimate Dino Queen has always been the dark horse in this tournament. Although she didn't feature last time, which is a bit of a shame, but oh well. Ooh, there's the tire attack effect from the Udanoceratops. But the Udanoceratops himself took a, took a bit of damage from the tire. But Ultimate Dino Queen is going to counter that tire attack with Tiebreaker to stop that damage. Ooh, very cunning from Queen. Ooh, a more tiebreaker nuts. I'd say Queen is on top early on, taking it to Team Asia. Three? Plus scissors? Oh, and the, the Danoceratops is going down. An ultimate Dino Queen takes an early lead. Ooh, it's going to be tough though for Team Asia because up next we have an Ulura Titan. Which will be at a disadvantage against the Uteraptor. So it'll be tough for Team Asia to pull, pull one back. Good chance here for Queen to open up a bit of a lead. Oh, that's a type. There's the tie recovery effect from the Ulura Titan. Ooh, the Ulura Titan does get off a crept. And the Dino Illusion gets triggered, but again, because of the type advantage Uteraptor has, not much damage was dealt. And Dino Illusion will help Queen tighten her grip on this match. Ooh, what's this? Ooh! A green impulse! A cheeky green impulse from Ulura Titan. That will go through the Dino Illusion and kill the Uteraptor. Very cheeky from Team Asia to even up the score. As for Queen's second dinosaur, we have an Epithocela Claudia. I swear people just enter this dinosaur just so they can really pronounce it. Uh, wow, 2,000, that's pretty good for a dinosaur with only 1,000 strength. I feel like this might be the joker of her team. You know, you don't expect it to do anything, and yet yeah, it does stuff. Ooh, gets the first hit. Hmm, no shockwave though, that's quite a surprise. Oh, that's a tie. And that's another tie. Queen still has a slight lead, but Team Asia is pulling it back.
Ooh, after consecutive ties, Queen finally gets the hit and almost takes out Ulua Titan. As the Emerald Garden gets triggered. But it won't be activated because Ulua Titan is gonna die. Right, this is a Super Dark Missile, so I gotta get my wits about me. And it is Super Alioramus. Okay, I'll wait the mode on two. Um, not much to say here about my moves that I've gone with. Uh, the heat eruption could come in very handy, and well, volcano versus volcano version. I added wall smash for a bit of. Oh. Ding, ding. But it's going to be tough for Team Asia to pull this back. Although wall smash will definitely help. Ooh, a decent amount of damage done, but Aqua Vortex does get triggered. As does Volcano Burst. Okay, that's once. The Epistosmila really Claudia getting off a tragic sphere. Gonna do a lot of damage to Alio Ramus, and it'll be. Wow! Oh, I think. That might have just won it for Queen, because next round is Awakening Time, but Alio Ramus will lose one of his moves, which means Epiphta C. La Claudia will be going for paper. Ooh, a tie! It will kill the Epiphta C. La Claudia, and Alio Ramus will still have his Awakened mode, as Super Rajasaurus comes in for Queen. Uh, he's definitely more attacking than my than the Alio Ramus I I put in Team Asia with that Magma Blaster. Ooh, crucial moment this. If Team Asia gets off a hit, I think they might win the match. But if Queen gets off a hit, it will be game over. Oh, Queen! Ultimate Dino Queen getting a crucial hit. And finishing off Super Alio Ramus. Um, well done to Ultimate Dino Queen, because I could have got a bit hairy at the end. If the Alio Ramus had got a hit, but Queen got the hit there and got the crucial three points. Right, we'll update the table and we'll end the session. Um, yeah, okay, so that's how Group G looks after the first round of matches. You've got Cryonova at the top with our bonus point win over MEGP10 and then you have Ultimate Dino Queen and Anton Gushan level on three points after enjoying opening round wins and then we have these three at the bottom with zero points. Uh, next matchups will be six versus four. Ooh, this could be a massive game at the bottom. Okay, I wouldn't say massive, it could be an important one with Team Asia going up against MEGP10 and then we have Anton Gushan against Ultimate Dino Queen. And then we'll have Engineer Gaming going up against Cryonova. Could be a chance for Cryonova to open up a lead at the top. Well, that's going to be a while yet, so I hope you enjoyed these matches. And Mr. Strange Gamer, signing out.